What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katya. Today, I've got an advanced vocabulary lesson for you. We're going to learn five C1 adjectives and then five C2 ones. As you know, you're expected to use advanced vocabulary when taking the CAE and CPE exams. Are you ready to expand your vocabulary? If so, grab a pen and your vocabulary notebook and let's get going! Let's start by learning five C1 adjectives. The first one on my list today is alert. It means quick to see, understand and act in a particular situation, to be able to think and notice things quickly. And now let's look at two examples. The first one, there is a text message scam, so please stay alert. The typical collocation would be to stay alert, the verb to stay. Let me put it into another example. We've been alert to the coronavirus for so long. The preposition that we have to use after alert is to, to be alert to something. Let's move on to our second adjective, which is customary. It has two meanings. The first one, it's a synonym of usual. For example, what have you had for breakfast this morning? My customary orange juice and a toast. True story. And the second meaning of customary is traditional. You can use it as a synonym of traditional. For example, it's customary to eat 12 grapes at midnight on New Year's Eve in Spain. And now let's get to number three, therapeutic. It means causing someone to feel happier and more relaxed. It's something very positive. And now two examples. The first one, he finds making sushi very therapeutic. And one more example, being in nature is very therapeutic. Please let me know what you find therapeutic in the comments down below. Let's go on to the next adjective, number four, unnoticed. It means without being seen or noticed, not attracting any attention. We usually say to go unnoticed. It would be the collocation, to go unnoticed. And now a few examples. The first one, I wouldn't like to be famous, because I like to go unnoticed. And one more example, Rebecca's disappointed because she feels that her effort went unnoticed by her boss. Your comments and likes don't go unnoticed. Thank you for everything. And now let's move on to our adjective number five, notorious. It means famous and well known for something bad. So when something bad happens and it becomes famous. In this case, don't use the adjective famous, but use notorious instead. And now let's look at two examples. The first one, Rio de Janeiro, is notorious for its favelas. They are poor and dangerous neighborhoods. And one more example here, Pablo Escobar was a notorious criminal. And guys, before we continue and learn five C2 adjectives, just a super quick reminder. If you like today's lesson, please don't forget to like it. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure that you do so. Thank you. And now let's continue and learn five C2 adjectives. Number six, renowned. It means respected and famous, in this case, for something good and positive. And now let's look at two examples. The first one, David Muñoz is a renowned Spanish chef. And one more example, Florence is renowned for its Renaissance art and architecture. Another example, Valencia is renowned for its city of arts and sciences. Please tell me what your city is renowned for. Number seven, the adjective engrossed. The prepositions that go after to be engrossed are with, 
something or in something. It means to be so interested or involved in something that you give it all your attention. This adjective could be a synonym of to be absorbed in something or to be hooked on something. And now a few examples. The first one, he's such an interesting guy and I was so engrossed in our conversation. And one more example, when you are engrossed in a good book, time flies. And we can also say to be engrossed with someone. For example, at first I was totally engrossed with him. He looked like the perfect man. And now let's move on to our adjective number eight, hollow. It has different meanings. The first one, having a hole, an empty space inside. For example, this tree is hollow. The second meaning, without real value, worth or effectiveness. Not true or sincere. We can use it to talk about words, a situation or feeling. Let's put it into a simple sentence. I'm sick and tired of your hollow premises. And the third meaning is sad, unsatisfied and empty. For example, James Blunt sings I feel so hollow in his song Goodbye My Lover. Two more to go, number nine, unattainable. It means not able to be achieved. And the opposite of unattainable is attainable. And now a few examples. The first one, don't set unattainable goals so that you don't feel frustrated. And one more example, passing the proficiency exam is attainable if you put your mind to it. The idiom to put or set your mind to something is C1 and it means to put a lot of effort into achieving something. And last but not least, number 10, underline. It means real but not immediately obvious or easily noticed. And now a few examples. The first one, a lack of communication was the underlying cause of their divorce. And the last example for today, building meaningful and healthy relationships is the underlying intention of meditation. So guys, that's it for today. Thank you for having watched this lesson up to the very end. I really hope you found it useful. And if you want to learn more advanced adjectives, check out the previous editions right here. And of course, if you learned something new, please don't forget to give this lesson a huge thumbs up, to subscribe to English Bits and catch me on Instagram for more daily English. Thank you and see you next Wednesday and next Sunday. Have a nice day. Ciao for now!